in New Brunswick at that time, um, a number of our communities were really victimized. And if you uh, examine, you know, the early history of our province, uh, this has not always been the uh, peaceful kingdom. Uh, from the very early days of our New Brunswick history, whether you go back even to the time uh, of uh, uh, when this was part of New France, and we learned as school children the heroic efforts of uh, Charles Latour, uh, when Charles, who had the uh, from the King of France, the uh, fur trade uh, franchise, uh, his colleague, another. Uh, explorer from France who was based over in the Nova Scotia area, part of New France, attacked uh, Fort Latour, uh, which is located where St. John de Brunswick is now. And uh, when Charles Latour was down in the Boston area getting arms. So uh, there's been those kinds of conflicts and there were conflicts between uh, the European explorers uh, and the First Nations people who were here. Um, and then during uh, the American uh, uh, Revolution, <clears throat> many of the Loyalists uh, who came up and settled in these parts uh, included also some black uh, Loyalists uh, who were, uh, had uh, earlier been, uh, were freed from the bondage of slavery uh, uh, in, in, the United, in, the, in, in the United States. Uh, and indeed, uh, much later in the mid 60s in the United States, uh, mid, uh, mid uh, uh, 1800s, the Americans fought a very bloody civil war around which uh, slavery was a, a, key, a key focus. So that uh, many New Brunswickers don't realize uh, that the black loyalists uh, who came here with the loyalists, and many of them were even given land grants and uh, not too far from Fredericton, and near Gagetown, there's a little community called Elm Hill. And if you drive out uh, through Elm Hill, uh, there are a number of, to this day, you can read on the mailboxes the name of the family McIntyre, which is one uh, black family that came with the Loyalists and were given land grants. However, uh, the, uh, the black community in New Brunswick uh, uh, were not always uh, uh, that well treated. In fact, they were poorly treated. Uh, and um, this brings us down through uh, to uh, after the uh, Second World War and many, many members of the black community served with great gallantry and dignity and heroism in the Canadian Armed Forces uh, in the struggles that we participated in against Nazism and fascism. And um, uh, one uh, very well-known uh, gentleman by the name of Joseph Drummond uh, had served in the Royal Canadian Navy, and um, he, uh, uh, you know, having uh, served uh, with the Canadian Armed Forces during the Second World War, um, was not prepared to accept uh, being treated as a second-class citizen. And uh, uh, one case, because uh, I was home from my summer from my summer holidays from university, a barber shop in St. John would not cut his hair, and. Uh, so I said, this is terrible, you know. And uh, we had a little sit-in in that barber shop. And, um, so I, I saw in my home community of St. John, New Brunswick, uh, the kind of racism uh, that was outwardly manifested. This was not institutionalized uh, or, or, or quiet. It was very overt. And then to my horror, I began to discover that even in our own province, a lot of the social service clubs had restrictive uh, uh, rules around membership. So for example, if one was not a white Christian, uh, certain uh, golf clubs would not admit you as a member. And uh, so uh, it was clear that racism, ethnocentrism was, uh, uh, was alive and well, but it wasn't spoken of uh, at that time. However, uh, our neighbors to the south in the United States were engaged mainly through the leadership of the black community in the United States in uh, the, uh, the claim and the, and the seeking of equality and equal opportunity notwithstanding color or race. And that impacted upon us here in Canada. And so in about 1965, um, I'd say really under the leadership of the black community out of St. John, New Brunswick, 
um, the approaches were made uh, to the government and uh, of the province uh, that we have to have some uh, fair employment practice legislation and fair accommodation practices legislation to make it illegal for people to be discriminated against in employment or accommodation because of race. 